Well, on the subject of transitioning and the social forces that accompany it, one woman who has been a social force for common sense on the issue is beloved Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling. Most of us will remember that fateful day in mid-2020 when Rowling doubled down on her stance that a woman is an adult human female and that biological sex is real and matters, both in tweet form and in a 3,000-word personal essay about her experience as a victim of domestic violence and how it shaped her views on the issue. J.K. Rowling was brutally attacked by left-wing trolls for her stance, but rather than apologise and go quietly into the night as so many other people in the public eye would have done, she stuck to her convictions and has been outspoken about the importance of biological sex and female-only spaces ever since. Most recently, in a thread of tweets, Ms Rowling effectively killed Scotland's new hate crime laws, which would criminalise misgendering a person by deliberately misgendering several unscrupulous trans activists and daring the police to charge her. The police, of course, said they were not going to charge her, which sets a precedent for other people who voiced such an opinion. That is, that if JK Rowling isn't charged for misgendering, neither should someone with no public profile and far less money. As it is, since coming into effect on the 1st of April, go figure, the hate crime laws have racked up nearly 8,000 complaints, with only 3.8% of them considered genuine. What a farce. But in the last couple of days, something has come to light which JK Rowling has also been outspoken about. The CAS report into gender identity services, largely for people under 18. It was 388 bleak pages revealing what lots of people, like us, have known for years, that medical transition is not the best port of call for young people with gender dysphoria and can do more harm than good. J.K. Rowling tweeted this in response to the report. Over the last four years, Hilary Cass has conducted the most robust review of the medical evidence for transitioning children that's ever been conducted. Mere hours after it was released to the press and public, committed ideologues are doubling down. These are people who've deemed opponents far right for wanting to know there are proper checks and balances in place before autistic, gay and abused kids, groups that are all overrepresented at gender clinics, are left sterilised, inorgasmic, lifelong patients. I understand that the review's conclusions will have come as a seismic shock to those who've hounded and demonised whistleblowers and smeared opponents as bigots and transphobes, but trying to discredit Hilary Cass's work isn't merely misguided, it's actively malign. Strong words, very well said, of course. But it was this tweet from a fan and J.K. Rowling's eventual response that really got people talking. A follower tweeted, Just waiting for Dan and Emma to give you a very public apology, safe in the knowledge that you will forgive them. To which Ms. Rowling replied, Not safe, I'm afraid. Celebs who cozied up to a movement intent on eroding women's hard-won rights and who use their platforms to cheer on the transitioning of minors can save their apologies for traumatised detransitioners and vulnerable women reliant on single-sex spaces. Boomshki. Lots of us will remember that, that when vicious online trolls were abusing J.K. Rowling in the worst possible way, Harry Potter movie franchise stars Daniel Radcliffe, Emma Watson and also Rupert Grint, who played Harry, Hermione and Ron, respectively, threw the woman who made them famous, who made them rich, to whom they owe their entire careers, right under the bus. Daniel Radcliffe wrote an open letter in response to J.K. Rowling's comments, disputing what she had said and asserting that trans women are women. Rupert Grint tweeted, I firmly stand with the trans community and echo the sentiments expressed by many of my peers. Trans women are women, trans men are men. We should all be entitled to live with love and without judgment. And Emma Watson tweeted, Trans people are who, who they say they are and deserve to live their lives without being constantly questioned or told they aren't who they say they are. I want my trans followers to know that I and so many other people around the world see you 
respect you and love you for who you are. Now, Emma was particularly emphatic at twisting the knife, saying this while presenting an award at the BAFTAs a couple of years ago. I'm here for all of the witches. <laughs> Yikes. While J.K. Rowling's words might be tough, her principle is sound. Not only did Daniel, Emma and Rupert offer their opinions uninvited in a show of disloyalty so rank it would make any decent person cringe, they have contributed to the noise that has influenced so many insecure, traumatised children to undergo these damaging medical transitions that leave them infertile, in pain, missing body parts in some cases, and often filled with terrible distress and regret. It's especially perverse given the fact the Potter Three have known immense financial privilege since they were little children, whereas before she wrote Harry Potter, J.K. Rowling was not only a victim of domestic violence, she was also as poor as you could be in the UK without being homeless, according to her. She likely would have had to rely on public facilities and spaces just to make ends meet and to be safe, and as such, absolutely would know firsthand the importance of single-sex spaces for women. So, brava, as always, J.K. Rowling for having the courage of her convictions. Daniel, Emma and Rupert should hang their heads in shame, those disingenuous little ingrates.